Hey everyone, today's video I'm going to show you how I saved a ton of time listing sports trading cards to eBay by using their bulk upload template. This is something I wish I would have been using from the start, uh, but really only came to using it starting last August, and then I've iterated my approach to make it quicker and more helpful for listing things quickly. I'm going to walk through an example, but to spoil things, this is the output of what you need. I'm simply using Google Sheets as a way to illustrate a spreadsheet, specifically a .csv, which stands for comma separated value file, that gets uploaded to eBay through their upload reports option, like so. Um, so this, this is the spoiler. This is, at the end of the day, any software that's creating a bulk upload template uh, is getting to this point. That includes software that uses artificial intelligence, image recognition. Um, it's just a fancy way, a fast way to create a spreadsheet that uploads to eBay and aligns with their required and optional information for sports trading cards. So I'm going to start here and then I'm going to show you how I make things even quicker and easier and, and take some shortcuts to uh, do things specifically for my store using some computer programs, uh, specifically through Python. But you don't need to have any programming knowledge uh, to do this. If you have something like Excel, if you have Google Sheets, you can do this. Uh, it'll just be a little more work than uh, if you are nifty with computer programs or have access to codes uh, like I've written um, to, to make things easier. So let's get to it. This is what the upload template looks like. You can see a bunch of fluff um, at the top here. This is required information for eBay. And really these columns are what's important. This is what eBay reads to upload to uh, its system. And, and you can see for the most part, these columns that have the asterisk at the start of it are required fields, uh, and the ones without asterisks are optional. Th that's not true in every case, but it's a, a fairly general uh, truth uh, that, that is right most of the time. So real small listing here. You can see I have eight total uh, cards being uh, listed. Uh, I, I can do as many as I want with this spreadsheet. I, I usually stop at 100 to avoid some potential error with um, images or something like that, but uh, you can do as many. I'm just doing eight for the sake of this video. So you can see the action add custom label. This is equivalent to what's called a, a SKU, S-K-U, um, which you can use to track inventory or projects. I like to track uh, some lots where I bought these cards. Uh, then I can do some accounting, look back at if I was successful. Uh, the category you see these numbers, th th these aren't going to come from your head. These are specific to eBay, and this is the trading card singles category. In this video, I'm not going to walk through uh, what all of these are, but there is some reference documentation. I can put some links in the comments to this video or in the description to show you where eBay gets this. So you could theoretically use a template like this for other categories, but in today's video, I'm only showing you sports trading card singles. Store category, this is unique to your eBay store. Uh, and so these numbers also are not generated by you, but they are tied to store categories. For instance, I have a rookie cards category, which happens to be this number, and a tops gold category for the gold parallels uh, that is this. And then one is the default uh, no category for your store. Condition ID, that's another one specific to this eBay language. So you'll have to look that up. This happens to stand for the best possible ungraded uh, condition, but there's a reference guide for that. Sport, you can see I'm listing mainly baseball with one uh, WNBA card, actually. Uh, player, if it's autographed, um, card number, type, uh, similar stuff. It, really, all the properties or characteristics of a card that you might expect um, and that you would want to see in a listing um, that you might be uh, interested in. Print run is another one. Um, language. Uh, I will call out a couple of things here. Shipping profile name, you can see this here, it says free ESE optional 449 ground advantage. That is the name of my policy, my store's policy for shipping. Um, and I've selected that shipping profile for these listings. This is actually a required field, doesn't have the asterisk. Um, but same thing with return profile. This is what I call my profile. And, and you have to go into your store to your profile page to get the specific name, that string of text 
Some uh, might include a number that's auto-generated by eBay. And you need to pull that and put that into these three columns for shipping return and payment profile names. Uh, so that's one snag that I ran into early that I didn't really understand. I wish I would have seen, but uh, this is coming actually from your store, and you need to set up those policies in advance. Title, very important. Everyone knows and appreciates the importance of a good title. Um, I'll show you very briefly, not the purpose of this video, but in another video I'll get into more detail of how I auto-generate these with the, the shortcuts. You can see just a few examples here. Quick note, these have to be 80 characters or fewer. That's uh, very important. Otherwise, you'll run uh, into a, uh, an error, uh, an upload error. The other interesting thing to note is you need to have an accessible place to store all of your photos to really make this nifty. So I have a cloud account where I have uploaded images corresponding to each of these listings, and I have the URL that eBay can use. It, it needs to be publicly accessible so the eBay code can go in, pull these images, and associate them with the listing. So I've already done that. I've taken these photos, I've uploaded them to the cloud, and I've put their, their URLs uh, programmatically corresponding to the listing. Start price. Uh, in this example, I'm only showing you fixed price or, or buy it now options. I can do auctions, no problem as well, but the start price is equivalent to the buy it now price. Best offer, this is one actually uh, for most things that I've seen is not default included. So I actually write this in for um, the bulk template to, to make sure that I have best offers turned on. Um, and, and that way I can accept offers and, and not just have the, the buy it now price listed. Uh, GTC stands for good till canceled. So this is standard. Um, it'll technically auto renew every 30 days or so on eBay, but for pretty much all buy it nows, you'll want to have good till canceled. Description also important. I automate and have a, a standard one for all of my listings. This is HTML formatting. So if you're not familiar, like this BR uh, with the carrots uh, stands for line break, um, but it, you do have to know just very, very elementary HTML, probably some conversion options out there um, if you want to just write plain text and then generate your description. So to summarize, this is actually what goes to eBay. This is the template. There are other fields that you can surely uh, use and look into, but these are the ones that I use to automate my listings. And as you'll see here, we're going to upload eight of these at this time and, and see how it turns out. So once you have the spreadsheet in this format, you need to go to your eBay. And then within your seller hub, there's this reports tab. Uh, which is not the most intuitive thing. You can see just how often I use this bulk upload option. Here's my history of things. I've uploaded hundreds of things here just within the past week as I've had time. Um, but you click this upload template, and as opposed to from Google Sheets, you need to have this saved locally so that you can pull from it. I just call mine upload file. You can see it was, um, I, I ran this script to generate this just a few minutes ago. So I'm going to click enter there and you can see this upload is in progress. It will flag any errors that you might have. Mine should be good to go, although um, this is my first time listing a WNBA card. So always some risk of an error there. But hey, looks like it completed just fine. If you're really curious to see what it looks like, you can download the results. Um, I'm confident in this, so I don't need to. Um, so at this point, I'll go to my active listings. And I'm actually going to sort this um, by, say, newly listed, just so I can, just go, so I can see um, what I just put onto the interwebs here. So one way to do that would be just sort by um, time left um, and and go from longest to shortest. It'll take a few seconds because I have I don't know 1,800 or so. Listings, I need to click that again to get it in descending order. Do to do, do. Still thinking. It's actually easier to test on your phone. So here we go. Um, 
you can see here, these are my recent listings and the titles all look good. The prices all look good. One thing that comes up is, hey, item photo. It's kind of weird not showing up. What is the deal with that? Well, it takes a few seconds to pull that image from the cloud. So by the end of this video, this this image should be in, in plain view um, and totally visible to users on eBay. I'm actually um, in parallel to this looking on my mobile phone right now, and they show up just fine um, right there. So don't be alarmed. Although um, occasionally if you get an error, it, it, you may have forgotten to upload it or the URL might be wrong. Uh, so you do need to be mindful of that. But by the end of this video, all of these, yeah, you can see here this Nick Lodolo rookie cards already showing up here. Um, and, and just to validate or affirm the characteristics that we put into those fields and what that means, you can see here the shipping policy inferred from what I put. Returns are accepted because I do that. Um, and if you go down to these card details, hey, it, it has all of the information that was in that spreadsheet. Ungraded, player, autograph, no, parallel rookie serial number. And this is really important because some people search by these different terms and you may not necessarily predict that. So I am always in favor of putting more information rather than less. And you also want to make sure it's accurate. People really can't stand when you put a bunch of fluff and information not relevant to the card. So one of the reasons I like the bulk upload template is that you can be very specific to what um, your, your card is and, and really contain good, powerful information. Um, I'm going to click to my shipping returns, and you can see here, this is from my default shipping policies. Um, and so um, this is just the, the policies. Uh, and I can go uh, put more direction in the chat or make another video if you're really curious to see uh, how to set up those policies. But just as a heads up, that is what this spreadsheet um, created. Um, and you can see it was really quick. It was really nice. Um, and you can imagine as you do more than, say, eight cards, you do 50, you do 100. Um, it is a huge, huge, huge time saver. And, and now we see a, a few more images coming up, and, and they'll be online ready to go pretty soon. So that is really the bulk of the information, pun intended, uh, to get to that bulk upload template uh, for your sports trading cards. Um, for, I'll, I'll just tease what I do to make this even quicker um, than this, because you can imagine typing all of this in is a real chore. Um, it, it surely will save you time and maybe be more accurate than if you're doing this one by one, say, on your mobile device, but still a lot of information and capitalization and this punctuation and spelling and, and other stuff. Like You can even see here this... Um, this card has two players on it, and so there's this pipe um, in the middle between the two names. That might get annoying. You might want to put a comma or a semicolon. Um, and so what I've done is actually create a way that automates a shorthand entry with way fewer inputs to generate this spreadsheet that then goes to eBay. And so you can see on this page, this is my template that I use, and I type uh, the shorthand. I only use lowercase because capitalization takes too much time, um, and it really reduces the information um, that I, I need to put into my listings. And this is what it looks like. So uh, I have all these codes set up. B stands for Bowman. UDH stands for Upper Deck Baseball Heroes uh, Team. You can see these common abbreviations, even some Fun old throwbacks like the Anaheim Angels here for uh, my man Benji Molina, Molina in the 2001 Fleer tradition. Um, the price, format, and shipping mode, these are my policies. Uh, fixed price and ESE, you can see I have the spreadsheet also set up uh, again on Google Sheets to take in auctions. And then the way I manage my images is I have everything have a, a four-digit number, um, which is actually how it reads in for my iPhone, which I currently use to take the pictures one of these days, I'll, I'll get a scanner, change this a bit, but for now, um, I just use my phone. Then in the background, and this is the part that um, probably very few people have the skills uh, to, to write themselves just because the overlap between computer science or programming baseball cards is, is not 100%. That's fine. Um, I, I've written this code over a, a number of years, um, or number of months, I should say, not even a year yet. And all of that does is it 
interprets this info and uses the programming, um, specifically with the Python programming language, to create that eBay template. And so you can see it goes uh, all the way to create all this stuff. And I hardly typed half this information in. You know, at no point did I say that it was a baseball card or a WNBA card, but it actually reads the team name and then it tells the, the, the code tells the spreadsheet to put what sport it is. The other nifty thing that I really haven't seen, I think a lot of these automated softwares um, may not even do this, but I auto-generate the title and it makes sure it doesn't go longer than 80 characters, which even includes things like abbreviations. Um, you know, uh, this is actually a good example. Normally, the code would default to Cincinnati Reds, but it recognized that this title was running out of space. Cincinnati Reds was not going to fit, um, and so it just put Reds, which is still a key search term. You want someone to be able to search Reds and potentially have this card come up. Um, but if there's enough real estate, sure, I'm going to put the whole team name, New York Yankees, Anaheim Angels. And so this is equivalent to the first spreadsheet and what actually goes to eBay, but there's a lot of logic um, and a lot of um, uh, code that makes some of the decisions for me so that I don't have to type it in. Specifically, category, store category, it recognizes that this is a rookie card based on me typing in the letters RC, and it puts it in my rookie cards category. So that's just kind of art of the possible. If you're interested in this aspect um, which is way, way quicker. And you can imagine if you're listing, say, a full set, you can really use the drag and drop features um, or drag and fill features of Google Sheets or any spreadsheet um, system. You don't have to use Google Sheets. But say you're doing a bunch of Sports Illustrated for kids cards, um, it really saves time because you can fill a bunch of these columns and rows um, automatically. Uh, so if you're interested in this, drop a comment. Um, or reach out, uh, and I'd, I'd love to walk you through this because um, kind of my next goal, uh, just to tease, next few things we're doing, coming up with an automated pricing method to, based on who the player is and what the characteristics of the card is, actually tell you how to price this. Um, and it, it that will save incredible time. You won't have to ever look up for comps or comparable sales again. Um, and, and it will just use all the data and some historical sales data to generate that. So that's kind of next on our hit list for things to automate. That way, um, this category takes takes little to no time. Um, and then we're also trying to deploy this to um, some type of web-based application so that other people can take advantage of this. Um, they, of course, there are plenty of other options that do this that will probably charge you on a monthly fee or something. Um, and, you know, may not have the degree of customization or even specificity um, that, that this does. I, I'm a big fan of uh, automating like eBay store categories. I really haven't seen anyone else do that too, but uh, I'm sure it may be out there. So anyways, thank you much for listening, tuning in. Please, please, please leave some comments. Um, and if you're interested in videos like this, I will be creating a bunch more um, moving forward. So feel free to subscribe. And if there's anything more you want to see, more than happy to provide that to you. So um, thanks. And we'll see you at the next video.